This is who we're here for. If you can see, this is Kyle and Baby Tanner. Um, we're going to open with a prayer. Our elder, Leon, over here, will open us with a prayer. So if you could all just rise for a moment. Thank you very much, Elder Leon Tsuchusis, for your, your words this morning. Um, just to give you uh, a quick background, most of you have already received our, our press release, so you know a little bit of what had taken place. Uh, February 11th, the Prince Albert Police Service issued a press uh, release of themselves stating that there was an incident at a home. They attended, arrested one individual, and returned back a few hours later um, to a deceased child. That litigation and that circumstances, I guess, rather than litigation, is continuing. Um, so again, there are certain things that we can and cannot say. Um, but with that, through our own investigation, we found that that wasn't the situation. Um, there's more to that situation, and that's why we're here today, to make sure that something like this never happens again. With that Right now, Baby Tanner is uh, laying in the community on the traditional territories of Thunderchild is where his final home is. He can elaborate a little more. Uh, on the evening of the night in question, police arrived to a domestic disturbance call and uh, the mother here, Kyla, was the one that was taken into custody. Um, although she was um, obviously upset at the time, she'd informed officers that her child was home um, and in danger and nothing was done about that. That's more of a clear picture of why we're here today. with Thunderchild Chief James Snakeskin. So we thank you, Chief, for coming to say a few words. Thank you. Tama ya, Mr. Nanasuma mamo tamay mamo te mas ongo ya. Kape mam sko tamam tanse kesa ya wasko ito tamay o teni ga n kai gita mek ske swa pa tama. Ego ma ya, Mr. Tene musko te ya kai pa tama no ya oas yuxe se swa nachi. よくせ、ニゴイウィチャナのがおにぎおけ。よ、スニックスコヨガウヨ、オゴマ。エゴヤ、カキュクテンギウイチトナネナナヤ、カプトゥナ、ケ、ユクテ、エギエントイタガペ
First of all, I'd like to thank the Creator for uh, bringing us together here to what you call, discuss what, what happened and uh, going forward to how we can prevent that tra tragedy like this happening again. I'd like to thank the Elder for the opening prayer. When we heard uh, about the, the passing of the young, uh, young person here, we as a community, we got together and we tried to support the family as much as we can. We had our CFS people involved, get a, what you call it, communication. Also had my counselors being involved. It was always a, it's always a community effort. Unfortunately, that's about the only time we get together and talk about issues that affect our everyday lives is when there's a tra tragedy that happens. It's not only uh, isolated in one reserve, but uh, when something like this happens, it affects all of us. Because I keep saying that uh, we're all interrelated. I don't know if this is the right uh, right place to say this, but uh, you're always here in Canada, giving foreign aid to people in different countries. I think they should look in their own backyard and give that aid to, to us. There's a lot of mental issues happening out there with COVID. I think they should be funding, funding those kind of things uh, so uh, we don't have a, what you call, a unfortunate deaths like what happened to the baby Tanner. Uh, I thank everybody for attending. It shows that uh, we as a, an Indigenous group, na a Native or First Nations, we are strong when we come together. But with that, I can ask them now. Hi, hi. We'll have uh, Chief FSA and Chief Bobby Cameron to come say a few words. <clears throat> thank you, Larissa, and thank our Nukumno for the prayer this morning. Kyla and your family, our Grand Chief Warlord and your executive, and our executive Vice Chief Ron, the media that's here. A lot of emotions running through many of us of hurt and anger to name a few you know it just we just can't understand why those officers who fielded the calls who answered the calls from 911 when Kyla put the call in it was clear, she said, my baby. They get to the residence and detain her. Again, she said, my baby. In the cop car, she said, my baby. And in the cells, 
She said, my baby. And the staff sergeant, I don't know his name, at the time said, Kyla is sober. But the officer still, under the assumption, took her in, under the assumption she was intoxicated. And some of the excuses we heard, we don't have the training. Well, resign if you don't have the training. Get the hell out of there. John Bergen and Greg Dion, do something. Terminate these guys without pay. They are just as much to blame for this young boy dying as the father. We demand you to terminate them. And we demand Christine Tell to step up and do something too. The speakers before me talked of racism. This evening, some of the non-First Nation people will hit social media and put us down. There they go again, racism. I'll tell you this, if that was a white baby, this would never happen. Never. If Kyla was a white woman, this would never happen. Them officers would have taken the utmost care and attention if Kyla was a white woman and if that baby was a white baby in that house. But we're First Nations. And again, being subjected to, to horrendous, disrespectful, ignorant behaviors from these types of officers. So we're angry and we expect and demand justice. We demand immediate change. We demand immediate results. Greg Dion, I'm gonna call and text you until you make changes. John Bergen, I don't have your cell number, but you can make the changes too. If not, then you should resign. If you don't wanna do something right for the people of Prince Albert, which are First Nations, then get the hell out of there. You're just as much to blame as those officers. If the mother decides to seek legal action, we're going to support her. All it would have took for those officers was to make, make a 30 second walk into the house. And clearly they would, they would have saw an intoxicated man with a baby in the house. This little guy would still be alive. A 30 second walk. That's all it would have taken for them officers to save this little guy. Man, oh man, how many times are we going to continue to face this kind of ignorance and disrespectful method from the, the police services? Whether it's PA, Regina, or any RCMP detachment out in Canada. PAGC and many others have continued to push for our own, our own First Nation Tribal Police. This is clear, a clear example of how our own First Nation Police Force would have the cap compassion and the respect and the dignity to take the extra time to walk into that house. This poor little young, young mother here. My goodness. We demand immediate change and we demand it today. We expect those individuals to make a statement by day's end and, and terminate those officers. Because if the mother decides there's gonna be legal action, then they have no other alternative but to respond. This is clear discrimination. There's no excuses to say we didn't have the training. That's a lame, weak excuse. We didn't have the training. What training do you need to walk towards the house and make sure a, 
make sure that baby is safe in the house. That's a training of a father, a mother, a grandmother, a grandfather. That's the kind of training. It's gut instincts, common sense. So media, you have a story to tell. And we hope you tell the, the right story. We, we hope you say the message that was spoken here this morning. On behalf of our FSIN and our executive and everyone that's here today, our 74 First Nations, Hunter Child Chief and Council. This lady deserves all the respect and all the justice that any mother would expect. Equise, hi hi. Um, thank you, uh, and acknowledge all of our, uh, of the media that are here, and of course our, our elder, and thank you for that opening prayer. Acknowledge, uh, folks around the front table as well, and my name is D Dutch Laurel. I'm the second vice chief of the FSIN. My portfolio is justice, as Larissa has said. My statement today, I want to, uh, to acknowledge Kyla, who's here with us. This tragedy deserves national attention. It has been far too long that our people have suffered the experience of racism at the hands of the justice system. One of our young First Nations women, at a time of need where she feared for the safety of her child and herself, received another dose of reality from the officers of the Prince Albert Police Service. At the time, during this incident, they labeled Kyla as being drunk, despite being sober. The Prince Albert Police Service ignored the importance of her plea for help and her motherly concern for her baby. And they did not check safety check on baby Tanner as a follow-up. They locked this young lady up, they lied and said she was drunk when she was not. This is criminal negligence that would be disgusting in any country. The, the police locked this woman up, as I said, and did not care about the safety of the, of the baby, the First Nations baby. The sergeant who was responsible for the cell block allow this woman to be unlawfully confined against her will and again ignored Kyla's plea for her baby's safety. To us, the police assisted in baby Tanner's murder and the chief of police made a, cloud, a loud and clear statement as he kept these officers at work. To this date, the, they are still on patrol. This is shocking and vile incompetence at all levels. Echoing 
Grand Chief Hardlock's comments. Provincial Minister of Corrections and Public Safety, Minister Tell, you have the authority to step in and address these injustices. Your ministry accredits Prince Albert Police Service and you have the responsibility to ensure ethical professionalism and public confidence. We called upon you after the third in custody death of a First Nation man at the Prince Albert Police Service last fall. And you responded then that it was business as usual. We will not rest in our fight for justice as our people in Prince Albert are at risk. In December of 2018, an incident happened, or many incidents happened, in a, um, in a city in Western Ontario. Two Ontario government bodies published reports that affirmed that Indigenous residents of Thunder Bay had long known that both the city's police force and the board of commissioners that oversees them were so encumbered by their own systematic racism that they had been failing to carry out even basic responsibilities. The intervention by the provincial government in Ontario is what we refer to as reconciliation. Minister Tell, we ask you again, meet with us, make this a priority and recognize our concerns of our nations. Thank you. We are be gone before the night falls. I'll be gone before long. I'll be gone before you waken. But I leave you with my song. I shall never I'll stand by and watch you grow You won't see me You won't feel me You will know when you hear my song You must run to find the stillness you must stand to lie down Your courage will not fail you You will find it in my song I shall never leave you You will not be alone 
I'll stand by and watch you grow. You won't see me. You won't feel me. You will know when you hear my song. You will know when you hear my song. Way ahead, way ahead, way ahead, ahead, way ahead, way ahead. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is Kyla Frenchman. This is her sister, Jocelyn. Uh, this is the mother of baby Tanner. You want to say anything? Jocelyn, you want to talk about baby Tanner a little bit? It's obviously understandable, very hard. She's keeping it hard for all of us. It's okay. You don't have to say anything. Don't worry. Okay. Have a seat. It's okay. As you guys can understand, it's a very hard emotional time for all of us. Uh, we've provided a quote in the press release from the family, um, from Kyla. He was a very sweet boy. He was always smiling. He was always happy. He didn't have a chance. And it's time now that we bring justice for him and we're not going to stop fighting for baby Tanner until there is justice for baby Tanner, like Chief Cameron said. So with that, we thank you all again. Please do respect the privacy of this family at this very emotional time um, and direct any media questions and calls to us. Um, Grand Chief from the Prince Albert Grand Council, Brian Hardlot. Good again, Larissa. Thank you, Larissa. Thank you, Elder, for the opening prayer. And the, uh, the Chiefs up there, the Chief. The uh, Chief Bobby, the Chief uh, Thunder Child, and the, the young ladies here, young women. And of course, uh, the uh, Vice Chief Dutch, the, uh, and Vice Chief uh, uh, Joe from from my office, the, uh, the next one, I'm, the, uh, the, um, I'm grateful, the next one, uh, that I'm here, the, uh, here to uh, really uh, make the change 
But first, I, uh, I thank uh, I thank you uh, for the opportunity here uh, this afternoon to say to say what I have to say, and really with a uh, with a heavy heart, in honor, in honor of this child, baby Tanner, and of course uh, the mother, Kyla. I, uh, this news conference here today, this afternoon, is about the child. And it's really about the mother here today. I think, uh, I don't think it, I know. As leaders, as leaders, whether it's provincial, municipalities, as First Nations, as tribal councils, and as First Nations, and all organizations, the police services, in this case the Prince Albert Police Service, and the organizations within within the Prince Albert Police Service, all the support systems that are there, uh, yeah, the mobile crisis that's there, uh, yeah, victim services. We we all have a responsibility. We all have that responsibility. The provincial government, they have a great responsibility when this happened. We all have that. And I feel that today in my heart. Our most precious, valuable resource that child, a child. We are not, we are being proactive here. We are not reacting. And I say that, our most valuable resource, precious. When we speak, we say that. We will work hard. I will work hard. And I believe we have, as a Prince Albert Grand Council with my colleague, Vice Chief Joe, the 12 chiefs of the Prince Albert Grand Council and all their council members we will work hard and make sure <clears throat> that this doesn't happen again to our First Nations people, to any other First Nations mother. I am, I am troubled, very, very, very troubled on how this this situation was handled when all the support systems are there all the government support systems that are there all the first nation support systems that we have that they did not follow policy their policy and again, I'll say this is about responsibility. I call on the provincial government to step up, talk to us. I call on 
the municipal government of Prince Oliver to call on us. Do better things for our First Nations people in our urban centers, our vulnerable people, our young mothers, to be protected. I just come uh, this morning from a, uh, a conference in Prince Albert, a, uh, hosted by the RCMP and the, uh, the North SAS Victim Services. And Victim Ser Services is part of the PAPS, Prince Albert Police Service. A, uh, so that's one. But as caring people, we're also support in our Prince Albert Rand Council. We have an urban services, a, a unit, a, uh, the, the Métis Nation, they have a support service. Yeah, you know, but they, uh, when the uh, people that are supposed to activate those services and they don't, that's where the problem is. And either they don't, they're not trained that way, or they're not experienced officers, I don't know. But we demand answers why that wasn't done. Kina Naskumit now. Kina Naskumit now. I thank you. I thank you to the media. I know you put this story out there. And it's about making change into the future. Nanaskumon Tine Mercy Joe Pedavia. Hey, hey. What do we want to see? We want to see justice, firstly, for this family. Secondly, we want to see an overhaul and a review of how the police in Prince Albert conduct their business. We want to see a review of the personnel involved with and their, and how they do their internal uh, governance. We want to um, acknowledge as well that there's many good policemen in the Prince Albert Police Service. But there's a certain few that control that agenda. And it's time for some of those, those um, officers that have been there obviously too long to retire and to let a different uh, focus, a different frame of mind. Community policing, getting back to community policing as opposed to, uh, and prevention as opposed to arresting and detention. That's what we'd like to see.
speak as the Vice Chief of the Prince Albert Grand Council. Vice Chief Joe. First and foremost, I'd like to uh, acknowledge our Creator for giving us this opportunity to, to shed the light of uh, injustices of our people. And thanks for the opening prayer there, the Elder. And thanks for the, you know, I'm here to support Tanner and Kaila. You know, uh, I just want to say a few words by saying uh, the injustices of our people. You know, you know, they depend on us to do the work for them. And it's so important, you know, the media that's here today to share that story, to share our emotions, the pain that our people are going through, <clears throat> like leaders as, uh, of, the, of the day, especially now, you know, uh, as you can see, the Boosie trial, there was no justice for our people there. The justice system needs to not only to favor anybody, but to favor everybody. At the end of the day, we're gonna keep on seeing this. That little boy didn't even get to see the future that holds for him because there was nothing. You know, excited my grand, I always wanna say, you know, when my colleague says, our young generation are the most important resource. They are because they are our the next generation of leaders, and we have to keep on the, keep on putting the good fight of our people. And I'm not uh, sorry to say this, and I know what there's so much racism that we fight amongst our other. You know, I just want to say that racism is live and well, and it's here. And you know, we all we always say this. We always all of us breathe the same air. We walk the same ground. We look at the same sky, we drink the same water, majority. When I say that, you know, we're only skin deep different. The only thing that's different is, you know, the way our people, the genocide of our people, of this Canada, of this Turtle Island. We have a long way to go. But we keep on have to have advocating for the people that can't speak for themselves. Today, Kyla, you know, we need, she needs our prayers. It's not only Kyla, imagine how many people are out there are going through the same situation. Just imagine. This is just one story, but there's one story too many. That little boy will never see life. Just like your own children, your own grandchildren, as much as you love them, that's how much that little boy was being loved. We always point fingers. Always point fingers at the females or the males of that family. But the system is broken. Not only the justice system. You know what's broken? This is what's broken in our people. The people that are so racist towards our people. Yet they live in the luxuries of Canada. They live the luxuries of the resources that come of our Turtle Island. I say that. We only <clears throat> accepted to share the land because the Creator only gave us this land. He never gave it to us. He gave it to us for to share with others. I just want to say that thank you and Tanner will not be forgotten. This journey, we're going to walk with Kyla and also the Busi family that never got justice. No more. The leaders of the day, like I say, the ministers that are involved with the government's provincial and the, also the federal. They need to open their hearts, man. Open your hearts. It can easily be happening to your children and your grandchildren. Leave a legacy. Leave a legacy for our people. Leave a legacy for your family that you were known, that you did, tried to do your best for your people of Sturdle Island. You will say, God bless you all. Mercy to you. Thank you, Vice Chief. Thank you. Utawa metanu taski. Pekne da git swasmis. Kitemagi nein. Kitemagi te ni pinat amustatan. Agi simantu. Mide maskat tisuin. Tome utian uma aske. Isimantu Kitimaganan 
utai hak. Kita magi hitenan, agak asam itu kita magi siak. Kesi mantu, kau mizan yang maskot disewin, tak apa tu magu maske, kita asko ya tu mag. Aga simatu, ei nasku midu. Aha, ei kosse, ei kosse.